Do you feel confident? Why? What are you saying? <laughs> Does my silence <laughs> indicate confidence? Probably not. Hey, it's Betsy. I'm Jasmine. I'm Katie. Today, I will be competing against my coworkers to see who can create the best original dish using Thanksgiving leftovers in under 60 minutes. The leftovers include turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, cranberry sauce, stuffing, roasted vegetables, green beans, and pumpkin pie. We're also allowed to add whatever additional ingredients we want. And then our coworker Kelly will judge our dishes based on how many of the leftovers we use, if we finish within the 60 minute time frame, our dishes, presentation, and finally taste. I'm definitely very nervous. <laughs> you know, I'm a very competitive person. I have a lot of competitive energy, but my confidence level is low. I feel like I have a delicious plan, but I, I'm scared of Betsy and Jasmine for sure. They're fierce competitors. Today, I am going to be making a Thanksgiving leftovers charcuterie board. I'm gonna have four homemade components, a pumpkin pie truffle, prosciutto wrapped stuffing bites, a roasted veggie dip, then some crostinis with some smoked salmon topped with some fancy piped mashed potatoes garnished with a little bit of fresh dill. I can get that done in 60 minutes, right? Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I'm gonna start by making pumpkin pie truffles. First things first, we are going to put this slice of pumpkin pie into this dish here, and we're gonna mash it up with a fork. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna loosely start to create some balls. I love dessert, so I knew that I had to have at least one sweet thing on the platter. I'm moving on to our prosciutto wrapped stuffing bites. I am now gonna take our leftover stuffing and form it into more balls. Next, I'm going to take our beautiful prosciutto and wrap it around the outside, trying to make this look as graceful as possible, which is why we have toothpicks to kind of help secure it on there. Wow, that looks good. I'm intimidated. I think I'm more intimidated by Katie and Jasmine than I am Kelly. Please be good. We are now gonna move on to our roasted veggie dip. We're gonna place our roasted veggies into a food processor along with some cream cheese because cream cheese makes everything better. And now I'm gonna add in two garlic cloves. I'm gonna scrape down the sides here a little bit, a little pepper and a little salt. And I'm also gonna add in a little bit of olive oil to loosen it up a little bit. Oh, there we go. We're getting there. It does smell good, but does a good smell mean good taste? It could use some onion or some chives. So I'll put in a few. Our dip is done. You have 40 minutes remaining. Oh, okay. So I've got some crackers here. I'm now going to top them off with some smoked salmon. So this smoked salmon is very thick. I feel like it's very hard for me to like make it look pretty, but fear not. We are going to actually top the smoked salmon with our mashed potatoes. I'm going to transfer our mashed potatoes to a piping bag fitted with a piping tip and we're going to pipe them on top. Oh gosh, it's like spaghetti. I don't have a plan B. <laughs> Oh gosh. I now have a new piping tip that is a slightly more open. Here we go. Uh, a little better for sure. That's fine. <laughs> Come on. Like there's pieces of potato getting stuck in the piping tip. I think I'm gonna need a plan C. Plan C, same piping tip. This time, however, we added some milk to our mashed potatoes to help loosen them up a little bit. All right, let's give it a go, let's give it a go. Okay guys, this is much better. A little runny, but I'll take it. We did it. Now I'm gonna place some fresh dill on top. And voila, our smoked salmon mashed potato crackers are finished. We are on our last Step, we are going to now coat our pumpkin pie pops into some melted dark chocolate. I also have some freshly ground graham crackers to top them off. Woo! Our chocolate pumpkin pie pops are done. 
One of the reasons why I chose a charcuterie board is because you kind of go through all of these steps to make a Thanksgiving feast. So I really wanted to kind of deconstruct that and make it kind of easier, approachable, and shareable. So by looking at my charcuterie board, I think I've included every single Thanksgiving leftover. We have our roasted veggies, our mashed potatoes, green beans, cranberry sauce, turkey, stuffing, pumpkin pie, and we even have our gravy. One thing's for sure, this charcuterie board has something for everyone. All right, I'm done. You have one minute and 31 seconds. Oh, yes! Yeah! <laughs> I'm gonna use all the ingredients to make a croquette flight. I'll start with the vegetable appetizer croquette, move to the turkey entree croquette, and then finally a dessert croquette with the pumpkin pie. I went with the croquette flight because I'm also a producer on Bring Me and our biggest hits are always the flights. Never made a croquette before. So we're off to a great start. Your time <laughs> starts now. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Start with some oil. Got some chopped green beans. Gonna go ahead and throw the roasted vegetables in there as well. And I'm adding these onions. I'm just gonna stir fry these vegetables for a little bit until they're heated through. All right, they're almost heated through, so I'm gonna sprinkle a bit of garlic salt. Don't want Kelly eating anything unseasoned. Some pepper. Oh, I'm still shaking, I'm nervous. You know the feeling of when you make something very special and then you give it to someone and they don't like it? There's always that paranoia. Okay, this looks pretty good. I'm gonna turn off the heat. We're gonna transfer these to our bowl with mashed potatoes, which are leftovers. Mix that up. For the sake of more flavor, I'm just gonna add a splash of gravy. It's so chunky. This looks good, so I'm gonna move on to dredging. I'm flouring my hands to prevent it from sticking so I can roll this into a nice ball shape or a flattened oval. Dip it in the flour. No, why did I do that? I should have made the wet batter first. Okay, I'm so dumb. So I'm gonna add about like a tablespoon of kewpie. Yes, kewpie is superior. It is a little sweeter, a little tangier. Gonna add some water. Let's dip that in there. You said presentation matters, huh? Asking for a friend. Asking for Katie, ha <laughs> ha, just kidding. Okay, so now that it is in this flat oval shape, I'm gonna put it into the air fryer and then gonna spray it. Okay, that's gonna go for eight minutes. So while that's going, we can make our next croquette. Why? What are you saying? Ugh. Okay, we have a working air fryer now. I'm gonna let that go for eight minutes and I'll flip it halfway through, but for now, let's move on to the entree turkey croquette. I have some olive oil heated up here and we're gonna start by caramelizing our onions. How much time do I got left? You have 40 minutes. I think we're on a good track. I'm probably gonna let them caramelize until they're just before medium brown. Okay, not bad. I'm just gonna stop caramelizing now. I'm gonna remove the extra oil. You know what, fried onions are delicious, so this, is, this will be a treat. So I'm gonna mix stuffing. It's extremely dry. Just a little bit of gravy. Some garlic salt and some black pepper. I got the mashed potato mixture that I made from earlier. Just gonna add it in here because it is extremely dry and it needs to hold together. Okay, this looks good. Let's get to dredging. Throw it into the air fryer and move on to the next one. We have 20 minutes left. Oh my god, what? Okay, we gotta move on to the next one, like now. Okay, we're on our last croquette. I'm doing the dessert croquette using pumpkin pie. I'm gonna first carve out some filling. The crust on the bottom is too wet, so I am going to take the side of the crust and crumble it in here. This doesn't look like enough, so I might have to use the wet crust anyway. All right, I'm just gonna throw it all in. It all tastes the same in the end, you know? Okay, it's getting to the point in the competition where I'm like, I have so little time and I need to do everything 10 minutes ago. That, that, that doesn't look like enough. I'm just gonna throw a little more in. I have used the pumpkin pie leftovers. Let's add in the marshmallows. Just gonna fold that together. When it's really wet, it doesn't hold its shape, so I'm gonna add some cornstarch as a thickener. I'm gonna add a little bit more marshmallows. I need it to stay together while it's cooking because if it melts all together into the air fryer, I'm out. Okay, I'm gonna add the granola. Oh, it's kind of thick. All right, whatever, we don't have time to crush it. So let's get to dredging. We're not gonna use the same egg as last time because that had mayo. I'm gonna add a splash of milk though. Okay, that looks good. 15 minutes. Ah, so much pressure. This is a pretty good shape. I'm actually really surprised it's holding it together. 
gosh. These granolas are humongous. The pie crust is sticking much better than the granola, but I actually think this might work okay. The one thing is now the size is much bigger than the other croquettes, but a big dessert is good, I think. And everyone has a second stomach for dessert. Okay, eight minutes on the clock, I'm shaking. My clock is running down, but when that comes out, we're just gonna go ahead and plate it. Everything is plated and I'm done. You have five minutes and 21 seconds left. Yes! Okay, finished in time. I used all the ingredients and I finished within 60 minutes. It's hard to say how confident I am because I haven't seen Betsy and Katie's dish, but I would say I'm walking out feeling better than I did walking in. I think it looks pretty decent, but now it's up to Kelly to decide whether or not she likes it and if it looks good enough. So here's my plan. I'm gonna be using everything but the green beans to make a delicious trio of raviolis. I'm not using green beans because I don't like them and I forgot that they were there. <laughs> so they, didn't, they weren't in my plan. Your time starts now. Okay. Uh, okay, so right now I'm gonna be making my ravioli dough first. And this is just some double O flour. So I'm gonna add my eggs into my well of flour. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil. And then I'll just take a fork and beat these eggs in the center and we don't want our well to break. And my wall's broke. My wall's broke and it's fine. You know, this happens. I'm just gonna kind of gently pull this in on itself here. So I'm gonna bring this now together with my hands and then I am gonna let the machine do the work for me because I have too much stuff to do. So I'm gonna put this in my mixer with a dough hook. All right, I'm gonna let this go for five minutes or at least till it's nice and smooth and when you press the dough, it springs back. It's gonna walk away. All right, our dough looks done. So I'm just gonna wrap this in plastic wrap and I'm gonna let this rest for about 20 to 25 minutes while I make the fillings. So my first filling is kind of like the whole shebang a little bit. I'm gonna add some of that leftover turkey that's I've shredded it so that it's gonna combine really nicely and you get a little turkey in every bite. I'm gonna add some cranberry, which could be a mistake. I've never tried this before, but I think the tartness is gonna go really well in here. And then I'm gonna add some fresh thyme. I will do a little bit of Gruyere cheese. I'm gonna add one egg. This is gonna help bind all of this together. And then I'm just gonna start mixing this together. I don't know, dare I add more cranberry? Is Kelly, does Kelly hate cranberry? I'm gonna bank on, she loves it. And we're just gonna add a little bit more. <laughs> All right, my turkey stuffing filling is done and I am gonna move on to my cheesy potato filling. This next filling, I'm kind of basing off like a pierogi filling, usually like a cheese potato filling. So that's what I'm trying to go for here. I'm gonna add a little bit of gravy cause like, you know, mashed potatoes and gravy. So I'm gonna add in some Parmesan cause I like a sharper cheese and then some cheddar, which is just kind of my classic cheesy potato. Mm. Oh, I like it. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little pepper. All right, these are looking nice, some smooth mashed potatoes. So these are done, I'm gonna move on to my last one, which is a sweet filling. This next filling is a pumpkin filling with some roasted veggies. What I'm gonna do is take some of our leftover pumpkin pie. I'm just gonna use the filling. We're gonna put this into a food processor. So I'm gonna try to dull that sweetness by adding some of these roasted carrots and sweet potatoes. And then I'm gonna add some goat cheese. It'll help bind this together and kind of cut through all that sweetness. And then I'm gonna add in some fresh nutmeg because it just smells like the holidays and it just has a lot of flavor. And then we'll add a little bit of salt and some pepper. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil to help loosen it up. I'm gonna actually add a little bit of water. The olive oil doesn't seem to be enough and I don't wanna like alter the taste too much. Yeah, okay. That's looking good. It smells like pumpkin pie, but let's see if it still tastes like pumpkin pie. Mm, I think that's good. All right, well, I think I'm done with my filling, so now I just have to assemble my raviolis. How much time do I have left? You have 32 minutes left. We gotta get going, we gotta go. So I have my ravioli dough here. I am gonna cut this guy into quarters. I don't wanna be working with too much dough at once. For the guys I'm not using right now, I'm gonna cover in plastic so they don't dry out. And I probably don't need all that dough, but I made backup because, you know, mistakes. So for this first section of dough, I'm just gonna flatten it out. I'm not gonna put any flour on this dough because it's pretty dry dough already. I will have her sprinkle a little onto my pasta roller and we'll get it going. And we're just gonna put our pasta through this machine. And then I'm gonna fold it like that and it helps get a nice shape to it. 
And we're gonna run it through a few times. And you can just see it's getting longer and longer every time we do it. We're gonna stop there. And I am gonna put some plastic over that guy so he doesn't dry out. I'm gonna repeat those steps one more time. All right, I'm gonna quickly assemble my ravioli. So I have my second sheet here and I'm gonna gently brush that with water. I don't wanna get it soaking or anything like that, but this is gonna help us seal it later. Usually you'd make a small ravioli and you fold this in half, but I'm making giant ones. So first I'll put on my pumpkin pie filling. Next, I'm gonna put down some stuffing. And last, I'm gonna add my cheesy potato. Okay, so before my water dries, I'm gonna place this other sheet of pasta over it. You wanna squeeze all around the base of your ravioli, trying to get out that air. Because if you leave air, it has a chance of opening up while it's cooking, and you don't want that. I'm gonna cut this middle guy out first. So I'm gonna use a pasta cutter, and I am gonna do a square for him. 20 minute warning. Okay, 20 minutes, that's fine, that's fine. The sauce is gonna be fast. Let's do a triangle for this guy, which I'm just gonna go for it. And then for our last one, feels like it's like grade school or something, because there's all these really silly shapes. Great, huge. I'm gonna go get some boiling water and we're gonna make our sauce and we're almost ready for plating. So I've got my raviolis cooking in boiling water. That's gonna happen real fast. So I'm gonna start to make our sauce. I am gonna do a brown butter sage sauce. I'm gonna cut the butter up into pieces. This way our butter just cooks more evenly. So you wanna be constantly stirring the butter and you can't really not pay attention because it can go from being brown to burned very quickly. So while this is going, I'm gonna add in some walnuts for texture and flavor. And then I'm gonna add some sage. And these are all gonna toast and fry in the butter and just give us deliciousness. All right, so I'm adding some salt. You can smell that sage. And now you can see we're getting those brown bits when you drag the spoon. You can kind of see those in there. All right, our pasta is ready to go. None of them broke apart, so that's good. And a little pasta water in this is okay. These are giant. <laughs> I think I should do making it big with Alvin. <laughs> these are so big. <laughs> We're just gonna toss these in the sauce gently. Just wanna coat that. And now we're gonna plate these guys. 10 minute warning. Okay. If I can't plate this in 10 minutes, I should be fired. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna pour some of these sauce over the top here. I'm gonna add a little bit of crushed pepper on top and some Parmesan. Stop the time. All right, you finished your dish with seven minutes and 34 seconds. Woo! Do I win? I used all but one ingredient. I think it actually looks pretty great. And now the only thing left to do is have Kelly judge it. Hopefully not harshly. Hey, I'm Kelly and I'm the lead culinary producer here at Tasty. And I'm gonna judge each of these three dishes. Before I try anything, we have a few points to calculate. So based off the number of leftovers they used, Betsy gets a seven out of seven, Jasmine gets a seven out of seven, and Katie gets a 6.5 out of seven because she forgot about the green beans. So since they all finished cooking within the 60 minutes, they'll each get three more points. So now for presentation. On a scale of one to three, I'm gonna give Betsy a three, cause this is insane, Jasmine a two, and Katie a three. There's nothing wrong with Jasmine's, but I just think Katie and Betsy really blew it out of the park. Jasmine's is beautiful, but I think it could have been displayed a little bit different. So last up is the taste test, the most important part. I'm gonna be ranking them one out of three, three being my favorite. So Betsy's, I just think it is so beautiful. I can't wait to try everything. She did a really good job visually. I know Bessie was worried about that dip, but it is incredible. All right, let's try Jasmine's. So a little secret, I hate cranberry sauce. It's my least favorite part of Thanksgiving. Oh, wow, you can see the marshmallow like melting in there. It tastes incredible. This was a really ingenious idea. This is the cheese and potato one. All right, this is the turkey one that she put extra cranberry sauce in. So let's see. The cranberry sauce actually balances out the saltiness of the rest of the dish. It's really good. Now that I've tried all three, I think I know which one's my favorite. So let's go tell them. All right, ladies, you did a great job. Everything tasted amazing, but there can only be one winner. The winner is Katie! <laughs> I never <went> anything! <laughs> 
I loved yours because I felt like you took it a step further. You browned butter, you made the sage super crispy, and you made pasta. Like, I wouldn't have even tried to attempt that in 60 minutes. I was a little skeptical about that cranberry sauce. Wait, do you not like cranberry? I hate cranberry. <laughs> but it actually went really well together. I'm so excited I won. I never win anything, but this was so much fun. Thank you guys for doing this with me. And thank you, Kelly, for being our judge. Let us know if there's any other leftover challenges you guys want us to try. And until next time, bye guys. Bye. Oh, yes.